So guys, you're probably wondering, what does Harley have to learn from CF Moto? Those, these two companies don't make any sense. They don't even exist in the same world, right? Well, stick to the end. I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna land that plane. I'm gonna make it make sense, but you gotta wait. I'll, I'll The two stories will converge together, I promise. First, we're gonna get into a quick history of CF Moto. Then I'll tell you a quick history of Harley Davidson. You'll see why that makes sense too. And stay to the end of the video and we'll talk about where the market I think is going in the next couple years. All right, let's go. CF Moto was founded in 1989 by this name here. I'm not even going to try to pronounce this Chinese name. Uh, and quickly after their founding, they started manufacturing small displacement engine parts. So think cylinder heads, pistons, cylinders, um, you know, small transmission components, you name it. They, they quickly grew from a small shop founded by a father and son to actually branching into manufacturing components for high-end yachts. And then as their progression moved forward, they actually started to produce more and more sophisticated power sports. They started focusing on that. They started with the CF Moto kind of cruiser motorcycle. I'll, I'll throw a picture up here. They also branched out into their ATVs, starting with <clears throat> smaller displacement, anywhere from like the 300cc on up. And from there, they branched out to a global market. And they, they actually, I think in 2008, I think it was, they ended up selling the first CF Moto here in the States. And then actually in 2011, CF Moto and KTM um, entered into a partnership. Then in 2017, the two companies started a joint venture and allowed the production and sale of KTM motorcycles in China under the name KTM R2R, which we know is kind of KTM slogan is ready to race. So that makes sense. Um, then CF Moto and KTM, CF Moto then now assembles small displacement models on behalf of KTM in its Chinese factories and produces larger displacement engines for KTM. So essentially KTM's, I think it's like 300 cc and down, uh, they manufacture a lot of those models. They also manufacture some of the bigger engines and then KTM finishes the assembly uh, at their facilities. Now, what I wanted to tell you also is as of last year, KTM has entered into an agreement with Yamaha to start producing some of their models for them. And I really think this shows uh, CF Moto's dedication to their build quality and to the fact that they really are trying to produce models for the consumers, what they're asking, not just what they necessarily, what they think will sell or what they think the customer might want but they genuinely are listening to the customers and producing the best value and quality that they possibly can and I really wanted to say that I respect that from CF Moto and I really respect the fact that they were actually started by one individual in his garage very humble beginnings uh, in my opinion much like Harley Davidson did and so because of that I really think they, they deserve a little bit more credit than we really give them. CF Moto also um, produces a wide variety of, of machines now. Everything from the small Papio, I think it's 125 cc, all the way up to here in the States, do we get the Ibex 800 motorcycle? And the same thing with their off-road lineup. They have everything from the small youth ATVs to all, a, a great variety of engine sizes, all the way up to 1,000 cc four-wheelers, side-by-sides, and sport side-by-sides. I, I really think that them offering a wide, uh, diverse range 
is the probably the smartest move that any company can make. When a company pigeonholes themselves into making one particular style of machine motorcycle ATV and they never really branch out and go after other consumers, uh, I really think it doesn't it doesn't hone their skills to making you know honing their craft and making a great product i actually think it limits them to, in their reach of possibly you know gaining a new perspective on a market if that makes sense for those of you who may not know harley hasn't always been making these big heavy beautiful street machines right they actually got their start making single cylinder small um all-terrain if you will motorcycles they literally started out putting engines in bicycle frames that's how they started and so now in this part of the video we're going to jump over and we're going to do a quick overview of kind of the history of harley davidson and mind you they even make used to make snowmobiles golf carts Yes, there's golf carts in existence that say Harley Davidson when they were partnered with AMF that say Harley Davidson on them. I'm dead serious. All right, let's get into that part of the video. So here we are talking about the Harley Davidson history real quick. So as most of you guys know, founded in early 1900s, actually in 1901 is when William S. Harley and um, uh, Arthur Davidson started working on their very first engine. The very first engine was small, 116 cc's, right? Remember when I told you CF Moto started at 125 cc engines? See where I'm going with this? Um, they quickly found out that that engine did not have um, enough power to push them up around the hills and on some of the challenging terrain um, in the surrounding countryside where they were. And they, they quickly realized they needed to make a bigger engine. Now, I wanted to remind you those, again, those engines they put into pedal bike frames to make them specifically for, to be able to conquer all terrain, right? To go from the city streets to the countryside to a dirt road, didn't matter. Um, I'll actually, I, I would suggest you guys, if you've never watched, go watch. There was a show, I think it was on the History Channel. It's somewhat factual, called Harley and the Davidsons. Uh, I, I think it really, it's, I'm sure there was some creative, you know, licenses taken there, but I, I think it's pretty accurate to, to how, how, they, how it was. I really think you'll enjoy it. Um, <clears throat> so from there, they jumped up their engines to 405 cc's. Again, the they focused on small, inexpensive motorcycles that could conquer any terrain, that any person could use on a daily basis, you know, whether it was for commuting, for adventure, for, you know, whatever it was. Um, from there, they started making bigger and bigger engines. Um, and I'm gonna jump forward to the AMF years. So in the, in the 70s, uh, AMF, American Machine and Foundry, uh, acquired them. They also had other uh, motorcycle companies in there with under the umbrella of AMF. But when Harley owned them, they had such things as the golf cart. Again, I'll put the picture of that up. They had golf carts with Harley Davidson's name on them. They had um, snowmobiles. Again, here's a picture of the Harley Davidson snowmobile from 1973. Um, it was actually a big step for the Harley Davidson in 1973 when the company opened a new assembly plant in York, Pennsylvania. Designed to commemorate America's bicentennial, Harley Davidson released a limited edition line of bikes. Um, you know, so they, they were really going after a much bigger market share a bigger section of the market of appealing to a lot more people and i actually think the amf years a lot of the quality wasn't so great and a lot of people you know uh, harley enthusiasts like to poo poo the amf era but i really think that a lot of really good uh, innovative designs came out of out of that era and i, I really i really think that 
Harley Davidson, you know, going forward needs to start to look at where they came from, even just back to the AMF days and then all the way back to, to their beginnings. Uh, I really think Harley Davidson is losing touch with some of its riders and I, I'm a, I am a big Harley Davidson fan, but I really think that you know, the market is going right now towards people w are wanting a more diverse sec you know, selection of motorcycles. I know Harley Davidson has that Pan America, but in my opinion, I think it was a big flop. I think it looks terrible in my opinion. Uh, I think it's going after that Pan America was targeting the wrong audience again. Um, I really think the Pan America was focused at some of the BMW GS Adventure riders, which is a ridiculous market, I think, to go after because the people that are on the BMW GS motorcycles want a BMW GS. They don't care. They probably are anti Harley Davidson. They want nothing to do with it. And you'll get some that fluctuate back and forth, but you know what I'm trying to say. I really think Harley Davidson, if you're listening, you should start to produce more small, single or two cylinder um, adventure style or even commuter or city style motorcycles that are much more aggressively priced. I, again, I'm gonna point to CF Moto. They just released this, their um, Ibex 450. Uh, in everywhere else in the world, it's called the 450 MT. Again, here's a picture of it. That motorcycle is in the US is going to be $6,499 brand new. And it's a 450 parallel twin, 21 inch front wheel, um, adjustable suspension, tubeless spoked wheels, mind you. That used to be only on like the highest, most expensive adventure bikes with tubeless spoked wheels. Now you're gonna get that technology with ABS, traction control, adjustable suspension, uh, tubeless spoke wheels, all for $6,499. I really think Harley Davidson needs to have a period of some self-reflection and look at where this market is going. Yes, there will always be a spot for the $30,000, $40,000 expensive motorcycles. People like to, to flex, they like to have that bragging rights. They like to, you know, uh, be able to say they have uh, the CVO road glide or whatever it is. And don't get me wrong, I still love those bikes, but I really think Harley Davidson is missing the mark and could take a few pointers from CF Moto. Being that to me, they started in very similar spaces um, granted totally different time frames right I'm talking about the 1980s versus the early 1900s i get that but starting with humble beginnings starting from two both of them starting from single owner trying to branch into a market from their garage or from the small shop and ultimately succeeding and growing their brand into a giant global brand but I think going forward, if Harley Davidson wants to stick around and doesn't want to be second place to put to a Chinese company like CF Moto, I really think they need to step it up and they actually need to start producing a more um, beginner friendly slash more off-road oriented slash just more competitively priced models if they want to stay relevant. I really do think that. And no, not a an electric bike or whatever. We know that doesn't work, right? If you're in a city, maybe, but for the rest of the world, the electric doesn't work. We don't want it. Sorry, everybody. Um, so, so from there, I, I really would like to say that, you know, I also, that brings me to my, my last point. And the fact is, Yes, CF Moto is out of China. And a lot of people are talking down or throwing shade onto CF Moto about just not even for their quality, which 
which is great by the way, but they're, they're, they're disparaging CF Moto simply for the country that they came from. And like, I've seen so many comments on videos and on forums and you name it about, I'll never buy it, it's from China, it's crap, and it, they're communist, all the communist country. You know, I get that. Everybody on here wants to talk about, everyone wants to take a, a you know, neutral stance on, I'm just talking about motorcycles, I don't wanna talk politics. Well, I, I, my last point is I wanna, I wanna, I think a lot of you people are making those comments in about, oh, I won't buy that from China because of the communist government and this, that, and the other thing. Let's apply that to the United States. Are you happy with your current government? Are you happy with Joe Biden and the way the, th the country is running right now? Let's say you're not happy with it. I'm not particularly happy. So, but does that mean I wouldn't buy a Harley Davidson because Joe Biden is president? That doesn't really make sense, right? So wh what I'm trying to say is, yes, politics and the motorcycles should be separate, but I also think you need to have a bit of common sense and apply that rationally to, to your decision making. And I really also think people don't realize how many parts come out of China anyway. So, so with that, that's my thoughts on the two companies and that's Harley, if you're listening, I think, uh, I, I really think you could take a few notes from CF Moto. Um, and again, CF Moto, you're doing great. Keep up the good work. Um, I really like your products. Again, still a huge Harley Davidson fan. This video is not meant to disparage Harley Davidson at all. Uh, I am, I'm making this video because I love Harley and I want them to continue to succeed. And to do so, I think this is what they need to do. All right, thanks guys. We'll talk to you later.